Let's go right here. We're going to do the NBA MVP tracker. And you said Devin Booker should win it. Well, no, I, I meant that as just, uh, I think you could make the argument for it. So I think right now, Jason Tatum's in first place. I'm surprised that they have Nikolai Jokic winning it for a third time. If the, if the NBA ended, I mean, I guess so. I guess so. He is playing amazing right now. He's shooting 62% from the field, which is like ridiculous. Averaging 23 points. He's just continuing to do what he did last year. Like Jokic is on like a three-year stretch where what he's doing is just ridiculous. But I think honestly, right now, if the season did end, it's it's Jason Tatum. Yeah, I agree. Now I think Luka Doncic is in second place. I think Giannis Antetokounmpo. Why? Because <laughs> if that team, if he wasn't starting, they'd be. They'd be, they'd, be a, they'd be a tanking team. If they haven't won a single game where he scores less than 30. That's why he's MVP. <laughs> he has to 10, score. He can't be. He can't be MVP. He, he has to score 30 for them to win. Tough fucking luck for you. He, they're 9 and 10. He's not an MVP. Third yet. place is Giannis Antetokounmpo. I say fourth place for me is Devin Booker. And fifth place. This is a doozy. Because I have fifth place, like as like a five-way tie between like Tyrese Halliburton, Shea, Donovan Mitchell, Kevin Durant, and like Steph Curry. Yeah, it, it was clear to me the last time we did the NBA MVP tracker to not listen to a single word you say when it comes to MVP voting. So what do you what do you mean? You sound, you, out of the two of us, out of the two out of the two of us, there's a better chance of me becoming a, a, a voter. It's yeah, and that's the issue with this planet is we got oh, oh, yeah, the yeah. athletic. We got these sport coat suit suit nerds. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but no, I, I would go probably yeah. Jokic is right there because they're so good. But I would probably go Tatum, Booker, and Jokic. I would I would go Booker then Jokic probably because. I mean, Booker's doing all this. They're the first seed in the West, and Booker's doing all this without Chris. He's doing this without Cam. He's doing this without Jay. They've been dealing with a lot of injuries, and they honestly look better uh, without Chris Paul. But I don't mean that to discredit Chris. I just think it's kind of the way it's going right now. So, yeah, we'll see. It's good MVP. Devin Booker was on heater last night. It was awesome to see. Jokic is good. Tatum's good. And, yeah, I know Luka's very talented, but... He's not my MVP. Steph Curry is probably actually number three for me. Ahead of Jokic. No, I agree. Do you want to talk about something real quick? What do you want to talk about? That you're gay? <laughs> Classic. Um, there's, there's like every week this year so far in the NBA, it's like we'll have like 13 games yesterday and then there will be like two Today. Tuesdays and Thursdays and then, are the NBA's for like slow days, and then I know, but usually they stagger them better than like thirteen games, three games, thirteen games. Dude, there's one game on Thursday. There's one, and it's not even a TNT. It's like some. It's like Detroit. I think it's like Detroit Golden State. It's a horrible. It's not must watch television. Maybe that's because of Thursday night football. I don't know. I actually have no idea what the NBA is doing as far as. It's just like Monday, every Monday, everybody plays. I've never seen that before. There's usually like eight, nine, maybe 10 games going on. And then you got, yeah, like four on Tuesday and Thursday. You got the TNTs and then you got a couple others. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I just, I, I, I'm not saying. I mean, the NBA is just like so stupid like how they schedule the games i mean it's it's annoying because tyrese halberton is playing phenomenal you can't watch him Jokic, you can't watch him okay you're you have a tough time if you really want to watch even Cavs games right here and it's it's just it's a league where it's very hard yeah. another thing that i want to talk about is can we talk about how many of these guys half of the, five of these guys are averaging 30 points seven of these guys are averaging over 28 Basically, eight of these guys are averaging 28. And only yeah. two guys right here are averaging under 25 points. Only one guy is averaging 20 points. Mm. Crazy. Crazy. Is crazy. Yeah. NBA is changing. I think we're becoming a – I think we're getting back to defense. Um, 
I don't I think, think it'll so. take. A, I think it'll take a couple of years. I mean, when we're having the most thirty point scorers of all time. We're not going back to defense. Yeah, I just think when you look at yeah, I think when Golden State ends, I mean you got Golden State, Milwaukee, Boston. These are like three phenomenal defensive teams. I think that's a huge reason for their success. And I think Toronto's trying to not emulate. I think they're trying to emulate the defensive side of it with a twist as far as interchangeability goes. And I think other teams are soon soon to follow. We kind of saw with Cleveland last year and Minnesota this year, and those didn't work, but. I don't know. Look at the Cavs, man. They suck without Jared Allen. Like, no disrespect. Defensively, they suck without him. I mean, they're actually miserable without Jared Allen. So, I don't. I think we're getting to a league where, okay, you need you need like two to three good ass perimeter defenders on the floor. Right? You need two good perimeter defenders on the floor while having. This is why a lot of centers are it, like being an offensive center whose skill set is like inside unless you're like Joel Embiid or like Jokic or somebody isn't you really want a big man like more teams are looking at like the Jared Allens the Clint Capella's yeah. the you got yourself also Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney there's another good example Jakob Pertl um Robert Will Robert Wills these guys that yeah they can score if needed around the basket like a putback uh you know the more pick and roll scores or anything they can pass a little you know a few of them might take threes but really they don't really take threes they're just there to rebound and protect the rim and they know their role and they don't do anything that's why like when you know bam and out of bio is like kind of confusing because like you were you're hoping that bam was going to turn into like joel Embiid and like one of the other guys where like he was going to be able to have like the offensive game where you told him like oh it's fine that you're doing that but sometimes it's like hey, maybe you should turn it back a little and like you know like and it's just when you look at this list right here you have guys i don't want to say iso ball but Every single one of these guys on this list can take any player in the league one-on-one. And that's inside or outside. That's what you're saying. Not a single guy here shoots. Like, Jokic is the guy who shoots the least amount of threes, and it's two a game. Yeah. Jokic puts up fucking 23 points a night on eight and a half made field goals. 13 and a half attempts. I got a rebuttal for that, though. What? How many of the players on this list have a, um, what do you call it? Oh, a, a ring. This answer's three. Three. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's three. cool and all, but I also need a team around me. And how many of these guys have made it to Western Conference final, Conference Finals? Like everyone on the list? Except for like Tyrese. Several. And Josh, and Josh, Mitchell's. Wait, didn't the Jazz make it to Western Conference, or did they only make it to the semi? I don't think so. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm messing that one up, but I don't. I think they've only made it to the semi. Yeah, the semis though. So three guys, right? Three guys: Mitchell, Jaw, and Tyrese are the only guys who haven't made it to a Western Conference final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that crazy? I mean, a lot of these guys are young. Yeah, I just. I don't know. It's you need a, you need a little bit of everything. I guess is kind of the point. Like, I like Tatum's awesome, man. I, he's one of the best players in the league. You know, he's my MVP. But at the end of the day, like Andrew Wiggins saved the Golden State Warriors dynasty, right? I still don't know if Jason Tatum can beat. I I don't I don't know if he, they still need. You know what I'm saying? Saying until I see it, because I saw last year Andrew Wiggins do what he does best against Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics offense. Like, it's great having him, but, you know, that lockdown defender on the perimeter, like you were saying, it's like, 